Instinctive intelligence, the kind of intelligence every human gets for free at birth and that a lot of people never let go of. This is the mode survival on, reflection off. Here, the brain isn't thinking, it's reacting. A person at this level lives on autopilot. They eat whatever is in front of them, believe whatever they hear the most, repeat whatever the group does, not because they're stupid, but because their brain works like a car alarm. It goes off at any movement and only exists for one thing, avoid pain and hunt quick pleasure. You know that kind of person who answers, I don't know, it's just always been like that, to any question? Yeah, that's this level in brain form. This level is great for escaping danger, but terrible for escaping a mediocre life. Because here, the person doesn't choose the path, they're pushed down it. They follow instincts, habits, impulses, algorithms, anything but their own conscious will. I put this as the lowest on the list for a simple reason. Compared to what comes next, this is still just a well-dressed animal trying not to get beaten up by the world. Mechanical intelligence, where a human finally starts to think, but only up to page two. This is where the supreme master of step-by-step -step lives. Tell them how to do it, and they'll do it. Ask them to improvise, and watch panic appear in their eyes. This level masters formulas, rules, procedures. They know how to solve problems, assemble furniture, follow tutorials, repeat processes, but actually understanding why something works? Yeah, that's asking too much. This is the kind of person who gets perfect grades in school and completely freezes when life asks for something that wasn't in the notebook. You know that friend who can swap every component in a PC but can't really explain what each part actually does? Yeah, that's level two through and through. This level is efficient, useful, disciplined, but rigid. It works like a programmed robot, precise, but predictable. And when the world changes too fast, this brain is still reading the old manual. This is the level that still depends on other people people's paths, but can already walk without being carried. Social intelligence, where the brain finally learns how to play the real game, the game of people. Here, it doesn't matter how many books you read, it matters how many faces you learn to read. This level picks up micro-expressions, sounds hidden inside words, intentions hidden behind smiles. It understands that no one says exactly what they want, and no one wants exactly what they say. A person at this level walks into a room and instantly knows who's in charge, who's pretending to be, who's scared, who's playing dirty, who's about to explode. And of course, this is where those people we politely call charismatic are born. And sometimes, less politely, professional manipulators. This is the kind of intelligence that defines social leaders, natural salespeople, politicians, and also some of the best liars you've ever met. They move through human groups like sharks in warm water, silent, efficient, dangerous when underestimated. At this level, the brain doesn't fully understand the world, but it understands perfectly who is inside it. Strategic intelligence, where the brain finally stops reacting and starts predicting. This is the domain of planners, life's chess players, the ones who see three moves ahead while everyone else is still deciding which piece to move. Here, the person doesn't live off emotional improvisation anymore. They analyze, they calculate, they weigh risks, they slow cook possibilities until they turn into advantage. Someone at this level understands that every action opens doors and closes others, that every invisible choice shapes a very visible future, and that losing a small battle can be the perfect move to win an entire war. That's why conversations with strategic people are slightly scary. You say one sentence, and they've already understood your next five. This level also marks the end of naivety. The person starts to see patterns, cycles, tricks, traps, and hidden incentives. Nothing is just what it looks like. It's all part of a bigger board. This is where the brain trades its flashlight for a lighthouse and finally sees the whole road, not just the next step. 
Abstract Intelligence, where thinking stops being just a tool and becomes an entire laboratory. Here, the brain plays with ideas that don't even exist in the physical world. Imaginary numbers, theories, simulations, philosophies, they all come to life inside the mind. This is the level of mathematicians, scientists, logicians, visionary programmers, people who can hold invisible concepts as if they were rocks in their hand. A person at this level doesn't only think about what is, but about what could be if the rules were different. They manipulate variables, create mental models, test hypotheses inside their own head as if they were operating a portable quantum machine. That's why talking to these people sometimes feels like talking to someone living two inches above reality on another plane, looking at everything from an impossible angle. At this level, the world stops being a collection of objects and becomes a collection of principles. Intelligence doesn't just interpret its structures. This is where the brain starts seeing not only patterns, but the equations hidden behind them. Creative intelligence, where the brain stops following paths and starts inventing them. Here, the mind works like a mad chemist, mixing incompatible ideas until something that never existed before suddenly appears. This level doesn't live on pure logic. It lives on unlikely combinations. This is where artistic genius appears, where technological innovation is born, where the solution no one imagined finally gets imagined. A person at this level takes two completely normal things, mashes them together, flips them upside down, and somehow turns them into into something brilliant. It's the realm of inventors, writers, designers, visionary entrepreneurs, and everyone who creates tools that will change the next 30 years. That's why creative people often seem weird, because to create something new, first you have to see the world in a way no one else sees. Here, the mind doesn't follow maps. It draws maps where before there was only empty land. At this level, the brain doesn't just understand the world, it starts to expand it. Metacognitive intelligence, where the brain finally discovers the most powerful trick of all, thinking about its own thinking. Here, the mind becomes investigator, judge, and engineer of itself. A person at this level notices patterns inside their own head, why they feel what they feel, why they react the way they react, why they make certain decisions, and how they can break those patterns apart and rebuild them whenever they want. They spot limiting beliefs like someone finding cracks in a wall. They watch emotions like clouds passing by, and they adjust their own reasoning like a craftsman sharpening tools. This is the level where someone says, wait, that thought isn't mine. It's just a reflection of the environment. And yeah, that tends to make everyone around them a little uncomfortable. At level seven, you're no longer just a user of your brain. You're the programmer. And once you understand the code, you understand how to edit it too. At this level, the brain stops being a passenger and takes the wheel with surgical clarity. Systemic intelligence, the top of the mountain, where the air is thin, the silence is heavy, and the mind sees so far it becomes unsettling. Here, the brain realizes that everything, absolutely everything, is connected by invisible threads, societies, ecosystems, economics, technology, history, psychology, time, and even consciousness itself. A person at this level doesn't just think in terms of problems. They think in terms of structures. They don't ask, what's happening? They ask, what system created this, and why? While lower levels try to solve symptoms, level 8 looks straight at the engine hidden behind the world. This is where deep philosophers, global strategists, civilization designers, and architects of ideas that survive for centuries are born. People who look at life and don't see chaos, they see gears. This is the kind of mind that asks questions so big they almost feel illegal. Things like, what if all of this is just a superficial layer over what's really going on? At level 8, a human understands the individual, understands the collective, understands the system, and sometimes starts to suspect the universe itself. At this level, the brain doesn't just sail through reality. It tries to understand its source code. 